My name is Kristen Donnelly, and I teach at Monarch High School, and I teach 9th through 12th grade. I teach AP Biology that's linked with uh, University of Colorado Denver, so they get a CU credit. And then I teach a science research seminar where kids are actually doing research out in the field. And then I also, this year, I'm teaching a physical science class. So I kind of have the spectrum of 9th through 12th, all ability levels. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, the last two to three years have been very stressful. You know, even at a, a district that supposedly is able to s pass all their bond initiatives, our class sizes are much larger. Uh, today I probably had about seven kids missing, so I have a class size of about 36 in a room that really only seats 32, and we're told that next year it's going to get even more kids, so my time allotment to get to each group is going to decrease which is going to affect their ability to learn and my ability to help them learn. Um, and I have actually taken a 1.2, which means I've had an extra class. Instead of five classes, which is the typical load, I've had six classes for the last three years because we end up getting money returned to us uh, like in October or November, which is kind of late. It's hard for the kids because then the, they get all of their schedules changed. They're used to a teacher and then they have a new teacher. Um, it's hard on the teacher. I'm really stressed and tired by now. I, I, need, a, <laughs> I need a break. Even spring break didn't help me. Um, teaching six classes with four different preps is tough, especially at the level that I'm teaching. But let's say I spend about 15 hours per class, and that includes prepping and grading and buying equipment and making sure everything works and getting things in and out of the classroom. If I spend 15 hours per class, and that means I'm spending an extra 15 hours on average, maybe even more depending on what I'm doing, per week that normally I wouldn't spend. Um, and that's per class. So when people say you have a 40-hour work week, no. Um, I spend a lot more time. I'm working on the weekends. I'm working after school. Um, I'm probably working 10 to 12-hour days to make up so I can teach that other class and be effective. I mean, the other way to go about it is then you decrease productivity and you're not as effective or creative in all the other classes, which to me is a disservice for the kids. Um, but I don't know how many human beings can keep this output. For three years, I'm exhausted. I've got to be honest, even though I'm not showing it totally here, I'm exhausted. And um, I don't think it's good for the kids um, and my psyche. So. Everything you see in my room is due to me writing grants. It's not the standard classroom, if you noticed. I am one of eight teachers worldwide that uses the 3D technology that I used at the beginning of the lesson. I am one of very few teachers that actually have clickers that my, my personal set. They were $2,500 and I paid for them out of my own pocket. Um, so this isn't something that comes standard. I've written a lot of grants and I'm really into technology and that's what excites me and keeps me creative. Um, the normal classroom you would see very minimal. You'd see some, a projector, which we just got a projector initiative. But it took until just this last year to get a projector in every room. And it's costing us a lot of money. And we had to forego getting new computers. So we have computers that are falling apart, but we do have our projectors. So, you know, there's sometimes a give and take with this situation. Um, but dry erase markers and a board, that's really the tools of the teacher, which is sad in today's technology. When you have kids that are digital learners, this is not how they should be learning. Um, that's not how they experience their world. It's not the same as when I was in school. Um, they don't get excited about board and lectures with the dry erase marker. Um, they get excited about using an iPod and being able to do a DNA fingerprint, being able to see things in 3D, um, using clickers. And it's really increased my achievement by 11%. I have data that from classes where I, when I didn't have this equipment to now. And that's a substantial increase. Um, we need funding so that every teacher can be trained to use this type of stuff in their classroom and um, that kids have access to it. And I really think it's the solution to kids who are not motivated in school and want to drop out. I have lower level classes where the kids are taking biotechnology of all things because they get to play with the equipment and they're so excited and they're not passing any other class but that class. So I think it's a big push that we need to put more money and we need to get our classrooms higher tech and we need to train our teachers because they need to be feel comfortable using the same equipment that their kids are going to use. In the last three years I have seen morale among the teachers plummet. 
they're depressed, they're worried about keeping their jobs. Um, new teachers are thinking maybe I'm in the wrong profession because I'm the low man on the totem pole and if I'm going to go or if it's going to be cut then I'm the pr first person to go. Um, older teachers are thinking, hey, I'm going to be the first person to go because I'm the oldest and the most expensive. Um, so when you have morale drop, you can't be as good and excited in the classroom. The second thing that I've noticed is in some schools, because I get to go and travel a lot of schools with the job that I do, um, the collaboration has plummeted. Teachers are like, you know, if I got a good lesson plan, I'm not going to share it with somebody else because then they're going to be just as good as I am, and I need to keep that edge. They're always looking at, what can I do that gives me an edge over somebody else? And to me, that's not the way teaching works, and this environment should work. It might work great for Google or some other company that you know is trying to sell a product, but kids were not trying to sell in that way, and it doesn't really work. And so I've seen a lot of stressed out folks. They're sicker, they're tired. The kids are more tired and sick, and um, it's made a huge impact. The kids definitely pick up on it, and they'll ask questions, and I'll, you know, sometimes off the record after, you know, after school hours, I'll try to explain to them what's going on. Definitely with this whole thing at Wisconsin and the bargaining rights, they were asking a lot of questions because it was all over the media about what was going on. Um, there's very little understanding of what unions do and their role, uh, but the kids know that I'm actually an officer at our union. So they kind of laugh when they say, oh, Miss D, she's like the mafia. And they're like, yeah, right, probably the nicest person <laughs> they know. And they're like, there's no way that that can be true. And so um, they've, I think the bonus is with this, they've started to be more aware of the funding issues and how districts use and spend their money. And so we've had a positive side in that we've gotten a community group who's actually been questioning our Ed Center and really talking about how do we effectively use money. But the negative side is we're losing out on the ability to train teachers, keep and hire, retain good teachers. Um, we really need uh, a competitive salary because that's going to get people who normally might go into engineering actually go into teaching like I did. Um, if I had to do it over again, I think I would maybe not. I mean, I love teaching, but I'm right now so stressed out and demoralized. Um, I've kind of been dehumanized in some ways over that whole thing with Wisconsin and what's going around. Um, and having to justify who I am and what I do uh, to people, is, it hurts. And so at some point you have to say, you know, is the stress worth it? And right now, if, if I started out teaching in this kind of climate, I don't think I would have lasted five years. So I'm really concerned about the new teachers. And the kids can feel that stress. And it comes out in the person's ability to teach well. I laugh. My husband laughs because he's like, nine months, I wish. <laughs> um, I One year, I actually had to ca account for all the hours um, for this grant that I was doing. So I recorded every single hour and what I did with it. And it turned out I actually worked 14 months a year, more if you were to put it at a 40-hour week, which would be the standard. Um, so I'm always doing stuff in the summer. I'm getting uh, recertification credits. I'm teaching classes. I'm doing conferences and seminars. I even meet with kids early because one of the classes, they do some research in the summer. Um, I'm tutoring. There's all sorts of things that I do in the summer. So the nine months, totally, totally not true. Um, and I think one of the interesting things is how they put our benefits package in with our salary and try to inflate our salary, whereas when you talk to somebody that's um, like an engineer like my husband, they never incorporate their benefits package in with their salary to try to inflate it. They just say this is how much they make as their salary, and they never really mention the benefits. So it's interesting that they're trying to pull this out like we have some wonderful benefits. Um, I can't even afford to have my son insured through BVSD. It's too expensive. So I don't know how two teacher families do it, because it would be a third of their salary to just insure their kids for health insurance. Um, I luckily have a husband who works in another job, so we can go through his company, and it's much better benefits. Um, I pay double the co-pays that he pays, so I don't really buy um, that we have such great benefits. I also 
hope that our state will realize that good education is our future and we need to fund it. And if we really want to bolster our economy and create more jobs, then we need to get people in higher tech fields. That's just the plain fact of the matter. And we're not going to be able to compete with China, India, and all these outsourcing unless we start to really invest in our future. And this is the way to go about it versus trying to take money away from teachers in order to pad the budgets of the state. Um, so I hope they really look at this and realize that this is the way to go. A good education for all is the way that we're going to improve America.